The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Hiya, Casey. Hiya, Ethelbert. Well, I see you got the windows and mirrors all dolled up again for the holidays. Yeah, the same guy comes every winter and paints them for us. Mm, like little Jack Frost. Huh? You remember, when you were a kid, they told you Jack Frost painted those ice flowers on the window. Hey, that's a good one. I'll try it on Tony. Hey, Tony. Yeah? Who's the famous artist that paints on glass? Oh, that's easy, Jack Frost. And uh, speaking of glass, everybody knows that Anchor Hawking is the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, a cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, The Life of the Party. One of the most interesting sections of our city is known as Whitaker Grange, with its winding streets and century-old houses where artists have established a colony. The more successful live and work in a narrow, dead-end alley called Gedney's Close. And in the late afternoon, a familiar, battered-looking automobile pulls up near the entrance of Gedney's Close. And... I guess I have to park here, Annie. They don't let you drive into this alley. Well, I prefer to walk the rest of the way, Casey. I love to look at these old houses. Yeah, you do, huh? Well, I got my camera and stuff. Come on, let's go. Okay. Higgins' studio is that big stone barn at the dead end there. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get a big thrill out of seeing his studio and meeting him again. I think Andre Higgins is our greatest living sculptor. Well, he was. He hasn't been producing top quality lately, though. The art critics say this new bronze group that you're going to interview him about is only run of the mill. I know. He's too busy playing to really work, I guess. Yeah. It's a sweet-scented crowd he plays around with, too. Well, I've never met any of them except his model, Marcel. Certainly no bargain. Oh, wait a minute, Ash. She's the only one who is a bargain. That gal's the most gorgeous brunette I've ever looked at. Really? Uh, well, I mean of her type, Ash. I don't know how a cultured, mature man like Andre Higgins can stand having her around, let alone be in love with her, as he apparently is. Well, at least she's not dangerous. I can't say that for one of Andre's other pals. Who? Oh, Blister Hoagland. He's a pal of Andre Higgins? Well, they've seen together a lot. Oh, Casey, Blister Hoagland suspected of a couple of murders. The cops have been trying to nail him for years. Uh-huh. How can Higgins associate with a man like that? I don't know. He's a strange guy. Like all famous artists, he attracts parasites who live on reflected glory. He's either too weak or too good-natured to give him the brush off, I guess. Uh-oh. Hey, look at that guy. He just came out of Higgins' place. Didn't he? <laughs> he must be headed for a costume party. <laughs> yeah, look at the green velvet pants on him. <laughs> He's fantastic. And that bright yellow smock. And a red beret. If he goes outside of this deserted alley, a cop will pinch him for obstructing traffic. <laughs> Annie! What are you doing with that big knife? <gasps> he stabbed himself, Casey. Annie. Quick, come on. He falling to the sidewalk. Oh, I can see the knife handle sticking out of his chest. And his blood. He drove that blade right into his heart. Has he? Is he dead? we got to get a doctor, quick. Yeah, and the police. This guy came out of Higgins' place. Punch that doorbell, Annie, will you? The door's open. Hello, Casey. It's with you. Andre, Andre, come here. I saw you two from my window, so I... What's happened here? This guy just committed suicide. We saw him do it. Good heavens. Well, who is he? Why did he come out of here? Bertram Farlam. Our student. Student? Well, he looks at least 50 years old. Well, I'm glad the poor devil can't hear you say that, Miss Virginia. He liked women to think of him as uh, young. He was the life of every party he attended. That should be his epitaph. He was the life of the party. Poor fellow. Well, he's gone and there's nothing we can do to bring him back. Uh, Come inside and meet some friends of mine. We're having cocktails. Uh, What can I make for you, Miss Williams? Mr. Higgins. Wait a minute, Andrew. You knew this guy. He just killed himself in front of your door. And it was most inconsiderate of him. Oh, I... I know you think I'm callous, but I'm a realist. Well, now that I've spoken so frankly, how about a cocktail? We'll skip it. Definitely. Well, now, apparently, I've shocked you. Ah, my guests are coming out. Why are you staying outside so long, Andre? Yeah, what's the big idea? Andre, I want you to make me another drink. Oh, Casey. Hello, Marcel. Oh, dear. 
Why, well, is Bert lying on the sidewalk? He's committed suicide, Marcel. Suicide? A knife in his chest. He stabbed himself, Tom. The poor sap. Did it because of Marcel, I suppose. Probably, Daisy. Well, I could not help it if he was in love with me and I did not want to make marriage with him. He knew my heart belonged to Andre. He should have. You tell the world your heart belongs to Andre. When Andre's around. How do you mean that last part, Daisy? Never mind. Uh, Miss Williams, Katie, you uh, know Marcel, of course, yes? Mm, yes, then I know Katie. And Miss Williams? Mm-hmm. I uh, don't think you've met Mrs. Leland Carmichael. Noted for her wealth, the five husbands she's divorced, and her vulgar display of diamonds. <laughs> gals who can get husbands, get them, Andre. And gals who can buy diamonds, wear them. Glad to meet you, chum. Call me Daisy. And uh, this is Tom Thompson. He's a mere artist and uh, a bad one. Candor can sometimes be more unpleasant than refreshing, Andre. Nice to know you, Miss Williams. Mr. Casey, thanks. Now, let us all go inside and get a drink. Now, wait a minute. We'll have to do something about poor Bert, won't we? Oh, that's Father Lemley. Oh, I... I've never met such as callous, inhuman people in my life. Neither have I, And Higgins, I never could figure you, but I kidded myself you were the right guy. Now, I see you're nothing but a louse. As for these characters you call your friend, why, get Casey. out of my way. I'm going into your joint and call the cops. And I'm going with you. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, well, they're laughing. <laughs> yeah. Annie, look at the dead guy. He's getting up. The handle of that knife still sticking out. It's a gag. <laughs> oh, no. You fell for it, John. <laughs> Miss Williams, Casey, meet the late corpse, Bert Fallon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me, oh, me. If you could have seen yourself, you thought I'd done a hari kari. <laughs> The old collapsible knife trick and a little red ink to make it look better. Yeah. <laughs> the knife blade slipped into the handle when I hit myself. See? <laughs> You've been a fine pair of dope skates. Uh, you don't pay a thing. Bert cooked up the joke when I mentioned you were coming, and we watched for you. Why, uh, I hope you're not sore. Oh, no, anything but. <laughs> we can take it. And you certainly handed it out. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you'll get a laugh on somebody else before you leave here. I'll see to that. <laughs> you can depend on Bert. He's quite a prank. Sir. Yeah, I know a million gags. <laughs> Our little Bert loves fun. <laughs> well, why shouldn't I, Daisy? Fun never hurt anybody. <laughs> That's a debatable question. <laughs> what do you mean, Tom? Oh, do not talk so much, Bert. Let's all go inside. Come on, I want a drink. Uh, let's yeah, go in, Casey, yeah. Miss Williams. <laughs> oh, uh, close the door, Tom, and... Uh, Keep the common people out. Mm, what a lovely studio you have, Mr. Higgins. It's so big. Oh, thank you can you. lose yourself in this barn. Say, where's Lister? I, oh, I'd forgotten that. Ah! Here, I, here I am. Oh, he's sitting behind that statue. Miss Williams, Casey, let me present Mr. Hoagland. We already know Blister Hoagland. How'd you like the gag they pulled on you, Casey? Pretty good, huh? Good enough. We fell for it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was watching from the window. Why didn't you come outside with the others? You'd have made the gag better. Just how? Well, if I'd seen you around, I'd have thought Bert Fallon's phony suicide was a murder. Why would you have thought that? You've done several jobs of killing, haven't you? Cops never proved it. They'll get the goods on you someday. Your luck will run out. I don't like this kind of talk. Yes, sir. Okay, Andre. I'm a good-natured guy. You never lose his temper. <laughs> Casey saw because Bert's suicide gag made him look like a sap and he's trying to needle me to get even. But I'm a good sport. <laughs> I can take things as they come and laugh with... Oh! Oh! What? 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 My foot! My foot's on fire! Oh, oh, Bert! The <laughs> old hot foot gag blister. <laughs> I snuck up and stuck a match in your shoe. Well, you... <laughs> I told you, Casey, you'd get a laugh on somebody well, you else. You lousy little clown <laughs> out. <laughs> Let him go, Blister. Let go of him or I'll let. Okay, Casey. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> the joke's on me. Have a drink with me, Bert, old pal. Let's all have a drink. Come on. I need hey, Andre, make you one of my special friends. Blister would have killed that little man if you had stopped him, Casey. Yeah. We really stepped into something when we came here today. I'll say we did. <laughs> Get out of here, Casey. Yeah, so would I, Annie. I came here for an interview, and until you get it, we yeah, got to stay. I simply haven't been able to pin Higgins down. He's all over the place. So is everybody else. How can a man like Higgins put up with such people? They have no talent, no intellect, nothing to recommend them. Daisy, that big overstuffed gal, told me this was dear Andre's inner circle. Huh. 
Casey. Huh? You think all those diamonds that Daisy wears are the real thing? No, she told me they're imitation. All except the big headlights she wears on her finger. That's a lot of carrots to the real McCoy. She says she's superstitious. She always wears it because her first husband gave it to her for luck. She's taking a big chance wearing anything valuable around a crook like Blister Holden. And I wouldn't trust that Marcel very far either. <laughs> you don't like Marcel, do you, Eddie? I never met such a phony. Look at her over there. Chewing gum like a chopping machine. And playing footy-footy with Thompson. Seems to be a little double-timey going on with that young artist. She's been Higgins' gal for a long time. Huh. Well, here comes Higgins. Huh? Well, what are you two doing there by yourself? Your party sort of wandered away from us, Andre. <laughs> People do scatter out in this big barn. Uh, come on to the barn. Let me fill your glasses. No, please. thanks. We're working people. Uh, i got to get that story from you, Mr. Higgins. Now, now, you can pry me with questions over the next drink, Miss Williams. Is that a promise? A definite promise. Come on now. Well, okay. Hi, Daisy. I found him in the jungle, and I'm bringing him back alive. Good hunting, Chum. Uh, Marcel, Tom, uh, you gather around, too. Chum, Chubby, Andre wants that. The master's voice. I'm not going to get that interview, okay? Not right now. Blister! Blister! Huh? Uh, what do you want? I'm gathering the clan. Come to the bar. Oh, uh, I was grabbing a nap. I'm gathering the clan. <laughs> I'm bringing in the sheep. Higgins has gotten himself a snoop for that. So Daisy. Look at her. Now that we're all together. Now, 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 now. Quiet, all of you. Please. Now that we're all together. My dearest friend. We're not all here. Where's Bert? Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, where's Bert? Oh, hey, hey, Bert! Andre, uh, Andre, Sherry, maybe he's asleep someplace. Do not wake him up. He'd be so peaceful here without Oh, him. now we need Bert, Marcel. He's always the life of the party. The party's better without his kind of life. No unfunny comedy, no practical joke. Tom, Bert's our pal. Yeah, hey, maybe your pal. <laughs> the last gag he pulled handed me as well, lad. Your foot still feel hot, Blister? Yeah, that was very funny, Daisy. The way you took it, it was. Trying to kill the poor twerp. Now lay off, will you? Maybe I'd better. Knowing your reputation. Well, I gotta find Bert. Bert! Yeah, where is Bert? Tommy, Tommy, while Andre is looking, you fix me a fresh drink. Okay, myself. Will somebody have a stick of chewing gum? Oh, I forgot. Nobody uses it but me. We sometimes get the benefit of it after you've used it. You shouldn't stick the wads of it on chairs. Ah. Show my glass, too, Tom. Here. Yeah. Ow! What's the matter? My ring. My ring's gone. My ring? You're kidding. My big diamond, the real one. Well, you had it on me. You were talking to me, Daisy. I know it, Casey. I was talking to you and Bert about... Bert! He was holding my hand after you left. He slipped it off. Bert wouldn't steal a ring. Well, of course he wouldn't, Tom. It's another of his unfunny jokes. Where is our run? Let me get my hands on him. Don't that hand me, you lad. Oh, <laughs> shut up, Lister. Marcel, Casey. Yes, I Everyone. Right? What's the matter? Come here. What is it? What do you want? I just found Bert. Dead. Dead. Is this another gag? No. He's not breathing. I think he's been murdered. Our story will continue in just a moment. Nothing is quite so comforting as a good hot cup of coffee, particularly the first thing in the morning. But that's the very time of day when everyone is in a hurry. Well, here's a way to enjoy delicious coffee with no fuss or bother of any kind and in a matter of moments. Simply take a cup, a spoon, and a glass jar of soluble coffee. Put a spoonful of coffee in a cup and add hot water and that's all there is to it. But make sure to buy your soluble coffee in a glass jar. Glass jars are easy to open. A quick turn of your wrist and the coffee is ready. And then, too, your spoon fits easily and conveniently into the wide top of the jar. No trouble in measuring. And last but not least, glass jars protect the flavor and freshness of soluble coffee perfectly against moisture or contamination of any kind. Now, most of the better packers of soluble coffee protect their products by using clean, sanitary anchor glass containers and anchor caps. Both products of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. I 
found him lying here behind the statue. Uh, this is you. Him, Casey. Well, he's dead, all right. A knife through his throat. In just the right spot, Anne, so he'd make no sound. But who could have killed him? It had to be someone here, Marcel. Definitely. You tried to kill him earlier this evening, Blister. Now, don't you point the finger at me, Daisy. You've been suspected of other killings. Now, be careful, Tom. You did it, please. I didn't. I swear I didn't. I think the cops will nail it on you. If all of you against me accuse me, maybe they will. But I'm giving her no chance. I'm doing a lamb. You're not leaving here. Yes, I am. He's got a gun, Casey. Keep away from me, all of you. I'm taking a rap for something I didn't do. I'm getting out of here. Anyone who tries to stop me gets a bullet. Oh, oh. oh. Andre. Andre. You shot him. One has a right to shoot an escaping murderer. And luckily, I had a gun. Phone the police station. Okay, Andre. Good job of shooting you did. You caught Blister squarely between the eyes. <laughs> Complete story, Casey? I don't think I've left out anything, Logan. Now, what do you say, Miss Williams? Well, I can think of nothing that Casey hasn't told you, Captain. No. Sergeant, have you finished searching those two bodies? Just now, Captain. There's no diamond ring on the guy who was stabbed around Blister Hogland either. I'll have the man do a detailed search of the studio for us. Yes, sir. You know, that ring may have no connection with Fallon stabbing, Casey. Look, Logan, when a hunk of ice worth a good 15 grand is missed at about the same time that a guy suspected of taking it is found murdered. I know. Casey, do you think Blister killed Bert? Well, Logan, I did. I fell in line with everybody else who was accusing him because I wasn't thinking then. Well, now I, I don't know. But you'll testify that Higgins was justified in shooting Blister. I'll have to. The guy was a murder suspect. He... Threatened us with a gat, and he tried to escape. Well, I'd have shot him myself if I'd had a gun. Not as accurately as Higgins did. Yeah, it was good shooting. Higgins told us he does a lot of pistol practice. Yeah, he told me that when he showed me his permit for the gat he used. You say Higgins discovered Fallon's body. But your police surgeon says Fallon was dead at least 15 minutes before the discovery was made. You can't think Higgins had anything to do with it. I'm simply thinking, Miss Williams. Nobody recalls seeing anybody near the spot where Fallon was found? Well, we were all we were scattered all over this barn of a place, Logan, moving around. You know what the Every, parties are like. Everyone excepting yourselves has been drinking pretty heavily and was inclined to be quarrelsome. Marcel hadn't had much to drink. Too busy crunching gum. Higgins wasn't quarrelsome. And he was tight. Until he found the body, that sobered him up. Yeah, it naturally would. A fat girl who lost her ring. She have a lot of dough? A couple of millions, Fallon told him. What about Thompson? Thompson's an art student. He goes in for... Uh, it's surrealism, that kind of stuff. Goes for that Marcel, babe. Yeah. Captain! Captain Logan! Yes, yeah, Sergeant? We just found a ring. The diamond ring? There's no diamond in it, sir. The stone's been pried out. Pried out? Let me see. Here. Yeah. Strong has been forced apart. That's the setting that held Daisy's diamond, Logan. Uh-huh. Now bring the fat gal in here, Sergeant. Bring all the witnesses in here. Yes, sir. Well, this proves that ring wasn't simply lost. It doesn't prove, but it certainly indicates. And how, Logan? Look. Bert Fallon slipped the ring off Daisy's finger as a joke, but somebody saw him do it and got an idea. Yeah. And that somebody killed the little guy, took the ring, pried out the $15,000 stone because it was easier to conceal, and he just sat tight. And then when Fallon's dead body was discovered, it was a cinch that Blister would be immediately suspected and accused of the murder. And if he'd gotten away with his run out, even for a short time, no one would believe that he hadn't stolen the diamond in addition to knifing Fowler. Now, uh, Higgins' his gunshot spoiled things for the real thief and killer. Sure, because Blister was killed before he could leave this studio. And your search of his body proves he didn't have the diamond. Now, if your theory is right, it'll eliminate Higgins and the fat guy. She had no reason to steal her own diamond. It leaves only uh, Thompson and uh, Marcel. Uh, yeah. Uh... Casey, I think your theory is 100%. Well, thanks, Eddie. All right, inside. Start your planning and bring him in. Now, let's go over and meet him halfway. Now, you people sit down. Make yourselves comfortable. Well, oh, thank you. Here's your pet chair, Marcel. Oh, thank you, Tom. Have you found my ring, Captain? Uh, we haven't found your diamond, Mrs. Leland Carmichael. Oh, dear. And well, they will find it, Dave. Well, I hope so, Andre. You know it's my luck. I'm going to ask a few personal questions, starting with you, Mr. Thompson. All right. Have you any money of your own? That is personal. I can get it from other sources if you don't tell me. I'm an artist. A bad one, many people think, which means I'm always broke. Yeah. Thanks. What's your financial status, Marcel? Why, I have only what I make as a model and what Mr. Higgins gives me besides. What do you give her besides, Mr. Higgins? I am... Um, I'm afraid I haven't been very uh, generous with Marcel. 
Oh, but you have, chérie. One hundred dollars a month just for spending money. Give you any diamonds? No. I do not care for diamonds. <laughs> any woman who says that is a liar. Do not say I di- lied, David. Uh, pipe down. Marcel. Thompson. Huh? Which of you two has that stolen diamond? Stolen diamond? Which one of us? Love won't do you any good. Are you hand it over or must we search the two of you? Oh, I have never been so insulted. Search me immediately. I demand that you search me. You seem very sure of yourself. Of course she's sure. The girl wouldn't steal anything, Captain. Now, we're going to see about that, Mr. Higgins. Sergeant, send for a matron to search this girl. Right, Captain. Say, Logan, maybe you can save yourself a lot of trouble. Huh? A quick way to hide a diamond would be to wrap it in a wad of chewing gum. Chewing gum? Yes. There's one on the edge of Marcel's favorite chair. Well, let's see. Marcel is the only one here who chews that stuff. I put nothing inside my chewing gum. Uh, someone put something inside this one. Here's a knife, Logan. Scrape the stuff off. I didn't. I swear I didn't. It's a diamond. It's my diamond. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, we'll go into that at headquarters, Marcel, thoroughly. I'm taking you there now. Oh, no, do not let him over. Help me. Wait. I stole that diamond, Captain. You, Tom? Yeah. I hid it where you found it. Now, let Marcel go. You think this Thompson's confession was just a noble act, huh, Kate? Oh, sure. Of course it was, Ethelbert. So is Lowe. No, so am I. Thompson's so crazy about that phony Marcel. He'd go to the chair to protect her. Maybe they both done it together. You say the suspects was eliminated down to just them two? On the basis of my theory. Mm-hmm. But I can't see her doing it cold-bloodedly for no better motive than a diamond too hot to wear and too hot to sell. Well, she could have had a double motive, Casey. You and Miss Williams say the dead guy was one of them practical jokers. Ain't you ever wanted to knock off one of them pests? Ethelbert has something there, Casey. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a lot. Excuse me, I'm going for a walk. I'll go with you. No, no, no. I I want to be alone. Think. Come in, Casey. Thanks, Andre. Oh, I'm not uh, disturbing your work. Well, I'm scarcely in the mood for work after what happened here last evening. Anyway, I've been away from the studio until a few minutes ago. I went down to jail with Marcel. Oh, how is she today? Oh, she feels utterly friendless. She even thinks I'm against her. Mm. You're trying to help her. You you believe she's innocent. Naturally. How does she feel about Thompson? Well, the idiot's phony grandstand confession strengthened the circumstantial case against her. Uh, that was the net result of it. Mind if I sit down on this? Oh, yes, yes, please do. Oh, uh... Are you paying me this uh, unexpected but uh, welcome visit as a newspaper man or as a friend, Casey? <laughs> this is a... This is a guy. Oh. Hey, the Andre, uh, what's your frank opinion of uh, Mrs. Leland Carmichael, Daisy? Why, uh... All around, good fellow. Very uh, superstitious, isn't she? That's very... And so I gathered from her talk about that ring. She kind of got on my nerves last night. She's too common. She's too... Bossy. Well, Daisy can be a bit trying. Yes, and Marcella, a million dollars worth of looks and quarters worth of brains. Now, she'd be hard to take as a steady diet. Now, really, Casey, Lister I... Lister was hard to take, and Thompson and Bert Fallon. But all these people had fastened onto you like leeches. What are you driving at? Just this. You saw a chance to get rid of all of them in one sweep last night, and you took it. You got Daisy's diamond, you planted it to frame Marcel, you killed Fallon, and then blister so you could be free. How will you... Prove this idea of yours? The cops will prove it when I sell them. You haven't done that yet. No. I'll well, just bring it on you first and see how you'd react. Your face has told me that my theory is good. What does this reaction tell you? I, I thought the cops impounded that gun you killed Blister with. They did. This is another. No one else will realize the motive for what I did. I didn't kill for profit or because of hatred. I simply had to be free of the friends who were wrecking my life. They were driving me mad. I was too weak, too cowardly to send them away. Now you threaten my freedom. So I must kill again. No, you don't. You broke out his gun, Sergeant. Get the cuffs on it. All done, Captain. Uh, Logan, I was beginning to think you'd make your play just a little too late. You, you policemen were hiding it. 
We let ourselves in here while you were visiting Marcel at the jail. Casey, you said you hadn't told anyone. Well, never trust the newspaper guy, Andre. We're terrible liars. <laughs> We'll join the crowd of the Blue Note in just a moment. One week from tonight, when we join you on the air, it'll be Christmas. But there are still five shopping days ahead. And if you put off any of your Christmas shopping until this last hectic week, here's a very simple solution. Between now and Christmas, your favorite chain store, department store, and other stores selling chinaware and glass will be featuring the amazing new Anchor Glass heat-proof dinnerware known as Jadeite. And that's spelled... J-A-D-E-I-T-E, jadeite. Now, jadeite has the beauty of fine Chinese porcelain. It has the color of oriental jade, yet it's as sturdy as the fire king oven glass you use for baking. And jadeite prices will be particularly easy on your Christmas budget. For instance, a complete 35-piece service for six costs less than $5. And jadeite in open stock is unbelievably low in cost. So be sure to ask for jadeite by name. Jadeite, the newest triumph of anchor hawking. The most famous name in glass. I gave you your notion about Higgins, Casey. You sure did, Albert. When you said everybody would like to kill pests. Yeah, but nobody does kill them. They just say they'd like to. Well, there's always the exceptional person. A fact naturally only realized by an exceptional person like uh, Miss Casey. <laughs> exactly, Miss Williams. Then thank you, Miss Williams. You're welcome. Well, anyway, when I when I started to think seriously of pest extermination as a motive, the parts that hadn't fit fell right into place. There's two parts that don't fit for me. Yeah, what's that? Higgins killed Fallon, framed Marcel for the murder and robbery, and then shot Blister Hoagland to make the frame stick. Let three pests he figured out of his way, but he wanted to be rid of two more, Thompson and Daisy. Well, Marcel was the attraction that made Thompson hang around Higgins' place. Once she was removed, he'd be removed. And Daisy was intensely superstitious. She'd never risk her luck around Higgins again. Oh. I don't approve of Higgins' methods, Casey, but I got sympathy for his feelings. Oh, how I'd like to make a clean sweep of a lot of pests. Good night, Ethelbert. Yeah. Oh, good night, great. <laughs> <laughs> Prime Photographer, starring Stott Scottsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Deep. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. Salvation Army kettles are here. Help bring the other million a bit of Christmas cheer. Let's make this Christmas a happy one for our American kids by dropping a coin in a Salvation Army Christmas kettle. <laughs> This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS for Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>